Rub up your engines! Well, I doubt if your paycheck has risen 30% since 2019, but the price of new cars has. Since 2019, the price of new cars has gone up 30% to an average of, yes, 50 grand, $50,000 for the average new car. Not the fancy ones, the average. And if you're leasing, it now costs you $777 a month for the average car, which is almost double what it was in 2019. So the average monthly after tax dollars at the average American takes in is four thousand three hundred eighteen dollars so if you buy a new car now you're generally going to pay about 20 percent of your take-home salary per month paying for that car and even today leasing a used car can be 544 dollars a month so they got you coming they got you going this is why i tell people take care of your cars make them last as long as they possibly can i mean i'm driving all over the place in a 2007 toyota matrix you think oh it's old look it's old why don't you get a new car said it runs like a clock why should i you know i've seen them with 400,000 miles and they're still running strong right why throw your money away getting a car when you don't need one when i was a kid it was keep up with the joneses everybody bought a new car every Every three years or so three or four years cars didn't cost that much generally you could trade it in buy a new car for about 500 bucks more well now with it they're fifty thousand dollars most people aren't doing that anymore yet the car companies are making record profits right and don't even follow the profits that they say Ford said they made 10.4 billion in 2022 but that's their adjusted profit. They wrote off billions saying we lost billions in the Rivian stock, when in reality they did not. They put in like 1.5 billion. Then soon after they went IPO, they sold a bunch of it for 3.5 billion. So they made over 2 billion bucks on that deal. But then they said the stock went way up and we didn't sell it now until it's way down. So we lost this and they're writing that off. That's why it always says, adjusted profit right they find anything they can possibly say that's a tax write-off and take that off to say though here's our actual profit when in reality a lot of it is total fantasy three and a half billion that they wrote off and i believe they wrote off even more than that recently they said now they wrote out a few more billions that's fantasy they said we had the stock it was worth this now it's not but it wasn't real, it was just the stock, right? But they show it to make the profits look less so they don't look as greedy as they are. If they say they're making that kind of money, let me tell you, they're making a lot more. <laughs> and they're just using bookkeeping, just like the government does, where they say, we have a horrible deficit. They find tax write-offs, whatever, uh, things that they say they lost money on, whether it's real or not, and then say they made less profit. So it doesn't make them look as greedy enough to pay as many taxes either. So always take the figures they give you with a grain of salt. But when they're actually showing you they make all this money, they're selling less cars and they're making more money. Something makes me think it's just pure greed. And you know how you get even with pure greed? Don't play their game. It's like people say, oh, gambling, don't bet on the Super Bowl. It's all fixed. Well, you don't have to worry about that if you don't bet, right? <laughs> So if you don't like the price of new cars, don't buy. And guess what? When they don't sell them, the prices start coming down. That's just how it works. So if you can hold off, hold off. I've seen people that went up to Michigan to go fishing and they see all kinds of Jeeps and stuff parked in certain areas and they're just sitting there. They're just sitting there because they can't sell the things. Don't think they don't have them they say they don't have them at the dealership but they just don't let you see them they're not sitting on a lot that's their ruse for charging more money this is the last one we got so you better take it somebody else will right don't fall for that crap and if you don't need a vehicle keep your old one take care of it don't waste your money now they're charging too much and eventually they will have to come down if people only stop buying the junk stop buying it then things have to change the seek says scotty my light was on for one sensor but now it's not on anymore question mark all right here's how sensors work when your car's driving the road your obd system is continually analyzing your car and like every minute and a half it goes through the whole thing if it goes two or three times and it sees a code it'll flag the code turn the check engine light on but as you drive down a road if it's a problem that shows up sometimes and then not others if it goes a bunch of cycles and doesn't show up the computer turns the check engine light off so the next time it comes on quick get a scan get the code send it to me or somebody a mechanic who knows about it and see what it is and he'll say well it's this system that's starting to act off let's say it's for the left front wheel sensor for your abs system right then that would mean maybe there's a piece of dirt on it it's not reading it right or the sensor or the connector starting to go bad you'd know what area is starting to have the problem but if it comes on and goes off 
It's not a serious problem yet. They will come on, they'll come off, and it all depends on what the codes are. Let's say it's one for inefficient catalytic converter, comes on and goes off. It could have been yet a bad tank of gas. The converter will have to work too hard. Then if you get a better tank of gas and it cleans it out, the light will go off because it won't show that the converter is inefficient anymore. Nicola Arata says, my daughter needs a new used car. Thoughts on a 2011 Honda Pilot or 2014 Subaru Outback? Those aren't bad choices. The Honda Pilot will probably last the absolute longest, but the Subaru Outback will probably get quite a bit better gas mileage. And it's also three years newer. It's probably going to have a lot less mileage on it. Which one is the best price for the mileage and what you're going to get out of it? Let's say the Pilot had less mileage than the Subaru. Well, then it could be a better choice. It all depends on a lot. They're both decent choices. You know, overall, in terms of long life, Honda Pilot probably going to last a little bit longer than a Subaru. But if they're low mileage and you're not worried about that for 10, 12 years, so now it might not be a bad deal to get. You, you get the price and what you're going to pay and what kind of gas mod she wants to get. And research that and then see which one you think is better. Hi, she says, Scotty, I'm washing my car. Is it okay to use microfiber towels to wash and dry? Don't have a sheepskin mitt. Oh, sure, the microfiber towels are perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with using them. They're soft. They're not going to scratch anything, you know. Just make sure that you rinse them a lot because when you're washing the dirt off, guess what? Where does the dirt go? A lot of it goes on a towel. So then you're supposed to have an extra bucket of fresh water, you stick it in there, and then rinse it off to the side, squeeze it out, wash some more, then rinse it out and squeeze it out on the ground so the dirt doesn't go into the bucket, and keep going that way. No, there's nothing wrong with doing that at all. And the same thing with a sheepskin mitt. You wash it, but you're still supposed to rinse it off in fresh water, squeeze it out while you're washing, because the dirt gets embedded in it, and you'll be rubbing the car with dirt otherwise. Spaghetti Yeti says, is bulb grease really a true user-friendly thing, or is it just a scam? Now, it actually does a purpose, especially if you, say, have a truck and a trailer and you're bringing a boat into the water. That keeps corrosion from getting inside and shorting things out. It seals corrosion out. If you live in an area where there's a lot of salt in the winter on the roads, not a bad idea to put it on because it will keep the salt water from getting into the electronics and shorting them out. You'll see a lot of manufacturers like Ford look at the factories, you unplug the alternator plug that's got the little wires. You'll see it's got dielectric grease on it because they don't want those little wires getting corrosion and messing up the charging system. It actually does work. It has its use. You don't put it on everything, but if you're worried about corrosion in a certain area, it's a very good thing to use. Captain NW said, Scotty, 2018 Chevy Volt. Should I purchase a second car, 18,000 miles? All right, I'm not a fan of electric cars, but you have a good idea, which I tell people, if they want to push electric cars, they're going at the wrong way. Buy the giant Ford truck, Model S, Plaid, Tesla, it goes 200 miles an hour, blah, 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 right? They should be stressing smaller cars like that Volt. And you're saying a second car, maybe not a bad idea. You just want a car to go to the grocery store, take the kids to the park back and forth, but you want a real car for when you go on vacation, take trips and go places. Not a bad idea. I could see electric cars as being excellent second cars. Now, in places like Europe, they might be a good first car because in Europe, a lot of people drive like eight miles a day. They don't drive much. They don't drive far. So, a shorter range electric car that you could easily then recharge overnight at home is not a bad idea. It doesn't fit the average American's full usage of cars, but you're talking about a second car. And with 18,000 miles, you know, it should still have quite a bit of life left. And it's a second car, you're not going to be putting much mileage on it either. Be a good way to learn about electric cars. You might say, oh, I really hate it. I'll never buy another one. Or you might like it for a second car. Hey, it's worthwhile. You buy them used, they don't have much resale value. Don't ever pay what they're asking because they're very hard to sell. You get a good deal. I've seen people buy those things for five grand. Have them for a while as a second car and they like them. Sammy75 says, Scotty, what 400 plus horsepower car do you recommend? Well, do you really need that much horsepower, you know? I mean, there's lots of cars out there with lots of power. But I recommend, if you want something that's going to last, you want naturally aspirated. You don't want some, you know, three-cylinder car with a giant turbo that puts out a ton of horsepower, but it's going to blow up. If you want that kind of horsepower, I would say get yourself something with a naturally aspirated V8, like a Ford V8, because they are going to last longer. When you start messing with V6 and four-cylinder engines that have 400 horsepower, they got turbo superchargers, they're going to wear out faster. Try to find a naturally aspirated one, and it will last a lot longer, believe you me. 
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.